Hey everyone, welcome back to the Automotive Flux channel. So today we're going to be making a sleeper truck, but first things first, if you're watching this the day that it's come out, then you can catch me live pretty much right now doing the Drag Race Showcase 2022, racing all of the 77 cars that made it through, including ones that look like this, and the one that you see in the background here uh, because yes we're going to be ripping and tearing through the drag strip trying to beat my best time of 6.4 seconds in the quarter mile so i hope to see you there but today i think is going to be a fun day because sleepers in my mind are always fun in, in some ways i do like a car to be a certain aesthetic but i really do admire vehicles that have the guts to stay completely stock looking and then on the underside of that sheet metal just being absolutely bananas so that's what we're going to attempt to do today this is inspired by an article i saw where they took a very stock looking silverado or it might have been a sierra i think it was a sierra and they crammed a <laughs> twin turbo, I think it's a, still a V8, but it's got ridiculous horsepower underneath. But it's just a single cab basic truck with a ridiculous amount of power and the thing looks stock from the outside. So you know what, let's make something similar because it sounds fun. I think for this I'm actually going to use the Freedom Hauler <laughs> 2010, I think it's supposed to be an F-150 based on that window there, so let's go ahead with that. I know that the one that we're supposed to be doing is a GM, but why don't we do it with Ford, just because. So immediately we do have a long bed single cab truck, which is what we're looking for. This is weird because the bed is kind of fused to the body, I guess they couldn't do it separately with this body. but. It's not a big deal for me, uh, I think we can still kind of get the same aesthetic anyways. But uh, we're just going to go for a semi-realistic setup. It's not going to be hyper-realistic or to Ford's standards by any means. I'm going to try at least a little bit. So we'll have aluminum panels, like steel chassis, that kind of stuff. But everything else is going to be my own design. So we're going to do a longitudinal engine. We're actually going to do... Let's do coils in the front and coils in the back as well. That should be decent. See, this is where things get interesting because I think I'm going to do a 90 degree aluminum block. We can copy the truck that's in the uh, article by making this a 10.1 liter. So I'm going to try to get as close to that as possible. <laughs> Apparently, we have no trouble doing 10.8 liters. So let's just make it a max size aluminum 90 degree V8. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to go rear wheel drive, so it will probably have issues with wheel spin. Just just a little bit. Okay, we'll go push rod, which means two valves per cylinder, and an aluminum head as well. So it's an all aluminum push rod engine. Pretty classic stuff that's not too out of the ordinary. However, some of the stuff in here might be a little bit crazy. A flat plane crank might give it away as being a not quite stock as soon as you start the thing up. But I kind of suspect that is if you start up this truck that's in the article, you're going to know that it's not stock. It's got two big turbos. <laughs> that's a bit of a giveaway. But yeah, forged internals because I think that'll be more fun. And skipping through all this stuff over here, we got turbos up to two of them, which is going to be perfect for this. I'm going to run ethanol because I think that's fun and uh, it will also go with a race intake on there and soon we'll see what our turbos look like. Ooh, they are tiny. We're gonna have to fix that. I cut the exhaust off entirely so the environment is gonna suffer but no need to worry about that. Let's just make this thing actually work. First thing I'm gonna do is fix these issues. Our conrods are having problems. Same thing with the pistons and all that stuff. We have a very, very low RPM limit currently and Part of the reason for that is going push rod, so maybe I'll change it to overhead cam, we'll see. But for now, uh, we do have some options, including but not limited to just increasing the quality of that significantly. And going into the turbos and hitting the race preset all the way up to 1000 horsepower at 5500 RPM. That's a little bit better. Okay, so I dropped it down to a 10.1 liter and also made these components here basically the best that they can be in order for us to be able to actually get a little bit of RPM out of this thing. But 6,500 RPM seems to be pretty close to our limit. I think we can get a touch more and then we'll start to get into issues. So 1,100 horsepower and I've barely done anything. So one of the easiest ways to gain just ridiculous power with this game is to have turbos set a race preset and then go ahead and uh, increase the boost as much as you can. Uh, it's going to blow up the turbo if you get too far, but you can make a ridiculous amount of power doing this. 
Good news, bumping it up to 3 inch exhaust means we get 1341 horsepower pretty much all at the top of the graph, uh, which is worrying. So <laughs> this is going to go very, very poorly for the wheels. Now, let me see what I can do here. So we're running octane of pretty darn close actually to our ethanol. We're, we're doing well pretty much in terms of efficiency, which is surprising for something that makes 1300 horsepower. So something that's weird about the current automation engine setup that I think is probably incorrect is that you get rid of your intercooler, you gain more power. Now, in real life, you can supercharge and turbocharge things without an intercooler, but unless it's a really, really low pressure system, you're gonna be pumping hot air into your system. So it doesn't make any sense. Like you, you'll just be putting hot air into your engine, I mean. Uh, and running hot air through the system without any way to cool it off. That's why an intercooler is m pretty much always necessary. It's not always needed, you can go without it, but for a 1400 horsepower V8, you definitely want an intercooler. I've seen some interesting Miata setups where they have just like a small, I think like 6 PSI boost supercharger or something like that, nothing crazy, and then they're running no intercooler. That's the type of situation where you can get away with it. Here we're running 1400 horsepower with a 12,000 horsepower intercooler. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. All right, so I'm sitting at a very comfortable 1500 horsepower at 5700 RPM. Ridiculous amount of torque, 2000 something Newton meters at 4600 RPM. So decently low torque range there. I hardly ever make anything that doesn't rev high. I don't know, I just tend to like high revving engines. So this is gonna be a bit of an anomaly, but we do have some decent power once you get past uh, 2400 RPM, I guess. So always gonna have to be somewhere up here. Never, ever down here, ever. <laughs> Hopefully we have enough torque to get this thing moving. All right, so we're going with the single cap body. It's risen up, thankfully. That, that was a worry of mine that the thing was going to be super low, but I guess with our suspension setup, that's uh, what we're going to get. There is a SUV variant. <laughs> it almost looks like an excursion, and then obviously the double cab as well, but single is the best way to go for this. I think single cab trucks are a little bit more unassuming, so it's perfect for a sleeper. Honestly, it looks a little bit more like an F-250 now that I'm looking at it, but I don't consider that to be a bad thing. So in keeping with the spirit of that other truck, I'm actually just going to go for the same red. <laughs> I guess we could go white. That's also a good like basic truck color, but the red seems to work well for this, so red it is. Something I'm not totally sure about yet is making the bumpers plastic. I think I'm going to go with it for now, but... I might change that. <laughs> Basic work truck is perfect for this though. So we're gonna go plastic grill, we're gonna go plastic everything. Not too much in terms of accessories, just whatever it needs to look the part. Okay, so I've basically just skipped all the way through everything just to try and make it have a stance on it. And it looks pretty good just kind of sitting as is. Like it looks like an F-250. Since we're going two wheel drive, I wanted to make the front end a little bit lower because I find that the two wheel drive trucks are just generally fairly low, uh, except we can't go any lower <laughs> because the suspension just doesn't let us. We could become a monster truck, but let's not do that. So what we're gonna have to do in order to make that happen is get into the fancy experimental stuff and kind of just shrink the front suspension down because yeah. But we have front ride height adjustment here and I'm just gonna knock that down a little bit. So we're lower on the front, higher on the back and looks good actually. Okay, it's time to design a modern pickup truck. My <laughs> nemesis basically. The bane of my existence is attempting to make anything that looks relatively modern, <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's see what I can do to uh, make a more basic but modern pickup truck. So we have a lot of light options, but I'm thinking because the front end is just so flat, I <laughs> I'm gonna to try to make it look very roughly like a current F-250. See, I remember when I said I was gonna make this kind of look like an F-250, uh, yeah, I straight up lied because this looks like something entirely different, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Basically, I've just gone ahead and done a few tiny things, including fixing this grill, and I've added a truck sort of like back rack to the back of it. I'm gonna add a little bit extra to that too. I wanna do like a construction light as well, just to drive home the uh, basicness of this. Uh, but yeah, it's actually coming along really well. I had this really awful idea for the headlights that I'm gonna try. 
where I basically take something like this and just stack it. Like, at this point, the headlights on these trucks are just so big, we may as well just put something weird together. <laughs> yes, now that's a modern truck in a nutshell. <laughs> so many lights. We must blind everyone that even thinks about looking. Sometimes I just can't help myself and I make literally everything way over the top. But I think this is actually turning out kind of okay. It's not great, but I'm not done. So it has potential to get worse. I think this is actually kind of a cool setup because the lights here are basically like the, the main headlights. And then this would be the spot that where, where you'd get like your upgraded headlights or something from say a platinum version and then obviously your indicators are standard so we have kind of a my own design also kind of a mix between like five generations of ford and also chevy at the same time headlights and grille combined into one now obviously we need badges we need decals i need to give this thing a name there's a lot of stuff to do i'm going to breeze through a bunch of it and i'll get back to you when more things are finished Okay, so some changes have happened, for better or worse in some cases. It's been a while, I've just been working on this, kind of trying to get some stuff in the order here. So we do have a bit of a portal to see the intercooler in there. And I mean, if you look close enough, you can probably see that there's some, whoa, there's some big lad turbos hiding in the back as well, uh, which is fun. So... <laughs> Uh, I'm done with the front and I added some little details like having wipers obviously and uh, extra things like these little nozzles for the wipe washer fluid. We have mirrors. Uh, the mirrors on these trucks are pretty big. These ones fit the bill but obviously they're tow mirrors. It's not quite right but it works. Something like that I guess. <laughs> Wrong door handles for this kind of vehicle but I mean, they don't really have the right ones in this game, so that's what we're going with. Back rack, I put some little lights on the top so it looks like a construction vehicle. Canada flag, because represent. Uh, we have a new name, and I've also put a motorcycle plate on it. Don't question it, I just like using my own logos. But it's a Sastava G560. I just came out of 560, or came up with 560 out of thin air. Uh, it doesn't actually mean anything, but that's what this is now. So... I think our basic truck setup is pretty much sorted. We kind of just have to get it running in BeamNG now. Also, I did add a hitch because I'm hopeful that we can tow something with this uh, because I think that'll be a lot of fun. But <laughs> yeah, looks pretty good actually. It, it's very basic and I think one thing that's really fun with this game is like if you have a basic truck like this or something that's more basic, you can make a luxury version of it or you can make like an extreme version of it and then have different variants. I don't know, I find that to be cool. There are a couple hints to our power, including, but not limited to, a dual exit exhaust out the side. This is actually two separate pipes, as you can see, because this thing has dual exhaust. They just kind of converge on one side in order to uh, keep it simple and not have anything too crazy looking. Okay, so we actually do have some specs for how fast it's gonna go. Uh, it claims 313 or so, so I had it up a little bit high to begin with. That being said, wheel spin is probably gonna be a problem. I did add in an extra little bit of a diff, so hopefully that'll do it, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm going nine speed auto. I just, I don't know, I wanted to try and reduce wheel spin as much as possible, and I figured a nine speed might help. I mean, if we go down to four speed, it basically makes no difference so modern trucks have these like 10 gear transmissions we're just going to assume that they kept it even though they definitely wouldn't have i don't really know how to gear these nine speeds so i'm going to stick with 50 50 and we'll just hope that that's decent this thing has so much power that it's going to be pretty much ridiculous no matter what so tires are pretty important i made them 275s I, I think that's what I have on my truck currently. I, it's a Ram with the 20 inch rims. I think it's a 275 uh, wheel width, but 17 inch rims for this thing because we're going basic. Pretty decent size actual like wheels, but that's just because this model has huge wheel wells and I need this to fill them in. <laughs> so this tire size might not be entirely realistic. I think that would probably be a 60 instead of an 80, but it's fine. Vented discs, uh, I'm gonna make them bigger because at the moment they're too small and we should be able to stop. I don't wanna make something that's just for drag racing. I was hoping it would actually be able to function. 
So up we go with this stuff. Aerodynamics are absolute trash, so no need to worry about that at all. Interior, I've already gone through this stuff, but I'll just show you. We got a three wide bench seat. Yeah, boy. Uh, basic, basic. Everything's basic. This is very much mirroring a truck that I actually used to have. Uh, back when I was working in the field in construction, I had my own company vehicle. And uh, this is, yeah, it, it's very much reminding me of that because it was a Ford F-150. It was a 2016 single cab long bed with a 3.7 V6. It wasn't slow, but it wasn't fast. Uh, <laughs> the guys who I were with, one of them had a GM with a 4.3 V6, and that thing was a lot more aggressive than our Fords were. Um, but I don't know, man. They, they weren't going to give out a bunch of you know, like just recent graduates uh, V8s and stuff. <laughs> uh, who knows what, what would have happened then. I mean, I already lost control of it um, driving on a very icy road with basically bald tires in northern Ontario here um, because they, co they couldn't afford to give us winter tires, I guess, for whatever reason. And if I had more power, I probably would have ended up in the ditch. But let's continue. Sportiness drivability, it's never going to be good because I'm trying to be semi-realistic, but I've just gone for a normal preset. Uh, actually, let's do a sport preset so it's a little more stiff, but it will keep the ride height where it is, um, and I think that that'll be that. Okay, so it's a 1500 horsepower twin turbo, 10.1 <laughs> uh, liter uh, V8 with a 9-speed auto and a 2,376 kilo truck, most of it on the front. This thing is going to be a wheel spin machine. Let's export it into BeamNG and see how she rolls. So I've got all the Drag Race showcase cars in here. There are a ton of them. I've had some issues with a few, but I think for the most part, they're gonna be pretty ripping. So if you're watching this video instead of the stream, then get over there, or the VOD uh, will be your best bet. That being said, I don't think that this one's going to be particularly fast on the strip, mostly because I gave it hard long life tires, I believe, which are terrible. So <laughs> get ready for some big boy wheel spin. It's time for our kind of orangey truck, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Sounds pretty good, considering I didn't put any exhaust on it. Oh, it spits fire too. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Okay, we'll put her in uh, sport mode and go for a bit of a rip here. Rear wheel drive, uh, so yeah, it does have a little bit of wheel spin. Not a big deal, but definitely something to consider. I am in comfort mode on the ESC, so obviously it's going to be as lax as it can possibly be. I'm going to quickly switch that to sport and we'll see if that changes things. Now, a truck with this much power, with this much subtlety, is a bit of a dangerous thing, <laughs> especially if you don't know what you're dealing with. 1500 horsepower, realistically, is absolutely mental. So something that's important to consider is if you're a young, young lad, which is basically a lot of the demographic of this channel, I'm assuming you're interested in cars, and you look at the cars that I make in this game thinking, ah oh, man, 1500 isn't that much, and it might not be considering some of the cars that I make in this, like cars with 10,000 horsepower, but the reality is for a street car, you don't want 1500 horsepower, that's way too much. <laughs> That's like step on the throttle even lightly. If your gearing isn't quite right or your tires are on a little bit of gravel or something, you're going to immediately spin. Like that's just how it works. To give you an example, I have a 2019 Dodge Ram 1500 with the Hemi. The thing makes about 400 horsepower. That's the most powerful vehicle I've ever owned, but it, it can break the tires loose anytime you want. And it's a truck. Like, I don't want to break the tires loose, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to work. But I could. And that's the, I guess, the reality of a lot of modern cars these days. Like, I had, uh, in the past, if you're not super familiar with this channel, I've had two Infiniti G35s previously. Uh, 260 and 280 horsepower uh, <laughs> for each of them there. But... I never felt like breathtakingly fast. <laughs> Those cars are definitely quick, but 
my Ram feels faster, as weird as that sounds. Pickup trucks these days are powerful. It kind of blows my mind in some ways, especially when it comes to Dodge, because for whatever reason, they just put a Hemi in literally everything, at least up until soon when they won't be able to due to environmental restrictions. But man, you can pick up like a 700 horsepower Challenger if your dealer has one in stock. I mean, you can get an 800 horsepower charger. <laughs> that's insane. You don't even have to work for it. You just have to have money. I guess that's how it is with a lot of things though. Anyway, so just driving this around, I'm sure you've noticed it drives fairly decently. It, it's kind of calm considering it has 1500 horsepower. I think, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't know where this thing excels. It excels in being a stealth vehicle. If nothing else, it excels in looking like a work truck but also at the same time uh, having 1500 horsepower, <laughs> not really being able to use it. I guess that's the fun part. The more I look at the front end of this, the more I'm realizing it totally looks like a GM. <laughs> it's a GM front on a Ford body with some weird stuff kind of mixed in between and then the engine out of like a hypercar. <laughs> you know, I kind of like these mismatched vehicles. So we've kind of figured out that it's decent at just driving around, but how does it do when it comes to regular truck duties? Let's check out a new map, get into the city, and maybe pull a hefty trailer. This much power and a hefty trailer, we should be good, right? Okay, so I've got a couple of mods, and uh, there are a few of them with some extra added weight on them. Just to make things more interesting, let's go ahead and try to move 2,100 kilos of planks because why not so our big boy v8 let's load her up get on that uh trailer docking mode you just have to press l in this game and you'll be able to line this up fairly easily except i absolutely suck holy thankfully it is quite forgiving boom we now have a hefty small trailer it's really not as much as i thought it was gonna be but this is a good place to start now <laughs> You can drive like a madman with anything on the back, <laughs> but does it behave? Kinda. I was worried that because the tires are pretty crap and they're also not particularly wide, that we would just be wheel spinning like mad with any sort of load on the back, but it seems to be pretty much fine and drive fairly normally. I don't know. It, it's good. You know, funny thing about the Ford truck that I had that I was telling you about before, it actually had a sport mode and... Putting it into sport made a significant difference. I don't know what it was about it that it was changing, but the thing ripped a lot harder in sport mode. <laughs> I didn't use it too much though. I probably should have. Okay, so this is a tanker trailer. I'm hoping that it's full and I was... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be full. Let's get something even heavier. Probably the biggest thing that we can hold for now. So one of the things I like to do in BMG way back when I first got it was load up trailers with things and then pull trucks uh, around <laughs> or pull it around with different trucks and hitch configurations until I kind of got what I wanted, which most of the time is just having something that actually drives reasonably. So <laughs> what I'm going to do here is put a heavy vehicle into the back of this trailer. This thing weighs 2,600 and something kilos, which is a little bit more than what we held before. At least I think so. I'm not sure how heavy that uh, tank of whatever it was. This is a relatively big thing, so I'm hoping that it'll actually fit into this trailer. <laughs> oh, it just, just barely fits. Yeah, that's that is snug. That is extremely snug. Okay, that that's on. I'm gonna consider that good enough there. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> Okay, we're good. Let's let's try it. Pop up that back, although there's not much left of it, and take off in our truck with this highly unsecured load. <laughs> it, the tongue is way too short. But you know what? Having so much power. I'm not really feeling the heavy weight. It, I can tell that it's there when I'm driving, but it, it's not really that significant. More stories from my time at the construction company. So they used to have a trailer that I often had the misfortune of hauling. Uh, and at one point I was hauling it, it wasn't overloaded. And 
uh, the wheel just decided to absolutely explode on me. And it just so happened I was just outside of a Taco Bell. So luckily I was able to turn into this Taco Bell and sit there and wait for rescue. But it was darn scary to have a trailer loaded up with uh, waste material. I was taking it to a dump and then have the wheel just explode on the back. It was sketchy as heck and I will probably never forget it as long as I continue to tow trailers in other aspects. At least this time a little bit more safely. But man, that trailer was probably too heavy for a 1500 with a V6. It was hefty and it was only a single axle. They definitely should have had a dual axle for the weight that it was carrying. It was, uh, it was too much. I ended up complaining about it as like a safety risk and then they got it fixed and that's fixed with air quotes because by the time that I had left there, it was still sketchy as heck. <laughs> that's just how it goes sometimes. But anyway, yeah, not bad at all with this thing and the trailer. I think I've actually created, even though it is a wild pickup truck, something that is functional and yet, okay, that just completely lost a wheel and almost flipped over. <laughs> but it's completely functional as a truck still, and it's something that you could absolutely take to the drag strip on the weekends or anywhere, anytime, because the thing can rip all day of the week. <laughs> But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this sleeper in the comments. And next week I got some more fun stuff for you. I actually have a bunch of cool ideas, so I'm excited to be able to explore them with you. More automation content coming up every week. I'm going to try not to skip any weeks. So uh, yeah, just tune in every Saturday for some more builds and fooling around and just general mayhem in automation and beamng that's kind of what i do around here but we'll be getting into some other games too at least kind of specifically some of the new releases at least i'm hoping so uh, i hinted about it on twitter but yeah that's gonna be it boys thanks for watching i'll see you again soon we actually do need to crash this into something before i ko myself in real life yeah that was worthy that was definitely worthy <laughs> all right not bad See you again next week. Just want to take some time to thank those who have chosen to support this channel. We got some cool people here who have decided to uh, hit that join button and support me financially. Some of them for 34 months plus and some of them for half a month. But hey, it's exciting to see that this list continues to be where it is. And sometimes it gets bigger, <laughs> which is awesome as well. I really do appreciate it, guys. And girls as well. Don't think I left you out, ladies. Uh, <laughs> so we have Overlord, QT Bear, Terry01, GA Pope, Davis Heister, The German Dude, Nat64, Synlab, Badger, Phoenix Shark, Baja Blast, Trevor, Cousin, and Goofy Plays. Thank you, everybody, for your support. I'll see you again soon. And uh, yeah, more stuff coming up. And uh, yeah, hopefully more showcases coming up too. It's, it's fun to be able to see everybody participating and getting hyped on the discord and stuff so i'm a bit nervous but you know that's just how it goes it's gonna be great hopefully that stream went well <laughs> see you again soon